You can't hear me. Now you can hear me. I'm there sorry. There we go. It's because of this red button here. I apologize for the red button. I'll say I'll say that all again. Hello, welcome to the after show. It's Friday night, uh, my favorite night of the week on Narrative TV, and we're here, of course, as we always are, with Greg Oliar from Prevail. How are you, Greg? Um, I'm better than Brett Kavanaugh's doing today. I'll tell you that. Yes, yes, we'll get to we'll get to that a little bit later on, and and you're better than LB's doing today, unfortunately, because I know. LB's only here um, by voice today. I can see her. But uh, you can only hear her voice. So hi, LB. Oh, wait, we can't hear your voice now. Why can't we hear your voice? I know it. It's another red button I pressed incorrectly. There you are. Hi. Is this me? Am I this here? Is you. This is you. This is my technical okay. incompetence as well. Um, hi. How are you? You why, are you? why are we looking at a picture of you in a, looking glamorous and fabulous? But uh, what's oh, going on? That, was, that photographer was so fabulous. Yeah. Um, I'm flat on my back. Sorry, everybody. At like two thirty, <laughs> I just stood up to get myself going, um, and then I went right down onto the ground, and uh, my back went out. So it had to happen a long, long time. But boy, when that happens, it just sort of anyway. So you're amazing I'm that you're still doing the show. I mean, that's really good of you. <laughs> well, what am I gonna do? I'm, I'm just, I'm here. I actually happen to be alone at this moment, so. Uh, I just, you guys are all I've got. Um, <laughs> We're here for you. But, uh, okay, good. <laughs> um, Greg, you mentioned uh, the uh, Kavanaugh story. That's interesting that he's uh, he's been struck by um, COVID-19 just a week before they're about to start uh, their uh, open hearings or their normal hearings at the Supreme Court. Yeah, I don't know what they're, I don't know, is the Supreme Court anti-vax now too? I don't know. I don't really understand Well, depending it. who you um, ask, yeah. Hmm. I'm sure a few of them so. might be. Didn't Ginny Thomas support the uh, the insurrection? She might be supporting the anti-vax movement as well. So, who knows? Yeah. I, I just, it, it, I um, you know, thoughts and prayers to him. I I I really do wish him a a full and speedy recovery so he can answer the many questions we have about him without blaming it on COVID. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. There was a fantastic photograph of him out today. Um, because I, mean, oh. I guess he's a, I guess he's a runner of some sort. Um. Do you, do you know what he was? He's a marathoner, or I don't know what he does, what he's doing out here. But he's, but he's doing something. Let's put up this photo and uh, take a look at what. This look at this face. I'm sure we can do better than that. Let's do full screen on that. Um, this is the Supreme Court Justice, everybody. Brett Kavanaugh, as he crosses the finish line Wednesday at the ACU or is it ACLI? ACLI, ACLI. Is that, Capital no, Challenge. Is this a is this a race or is this some kind of drinking contest? I don't see the kegs. He, um, he is making a face as if he's just done a keg stand. He, that he's he, particularly yeah. proud of. <laughs> you you um, know he's done that face before. He's he well, knows how to. That's not his first time. Um, that's also a Washington yeah. Nationals hat, <laughs> which I'm sure he wore when he went to the to the baseball games with his buddies who bought um, all that you know those those season tickets that he that he went in on. Yeah. So he's, um, you know, he's method acting here with the with the Washington Nationals hat. I mean, look, wow. he found time to do this, which is impressive. I, you know, I didn't run a marathon, which is whatever it is that he's running there. Um, so good for him. Um, maybe he could spend some more time uh, being like a fair justice and 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 passing good uh, good judgments from the court, which is a tall measure to ask for him. Um, so I was going to ask you about something else about Kavanaugh. And it wasn't really planned, but there was an art, and I apologize if I'm throwing a curveball at you guys. But there was an article about. Mm. Uh, all this this weekend, all this week about um, whether, um, sorry, I'm just having some trouble here. It's that kind of night. Um, here we go. Um, there, there was some, there was an article I, and I can't even remember who it was by. I think it was, uh, uh, who, who put out the You're article? Talking about, about the Mother Jones? Yes, the Mother, about the Mother Jones, Jones article. article. Yes, thank you for reminding me. Which basically focused on just one piece of the Kavanaugh scandal, the, the fact that he may have gotten money from his father to pay off his loans or to pay his house, one of those two facts. But it didn't really, didn't really take the whole uh, scandal into account. And it sort of, to me, only, only really spoke to the one as aspect of it, which isn't necessarily the most controversial piece of it, because really it's, that's not the point. The point is that he lied. Yeah, he perjured yeah. himself, and and th that article was called "Here's the Truth About Brett Kavanaugh's Finances." And I wrote a rebuttal because she she quotes me mm -hmm. in the um, in the piece right up front. She quotes me in, in a recent piece that I wrote, and not from the you... five part series uh, that LB and I wrote. And she sort of derisively but she identifies does reference me. that. 
Yeah, yeah. She does. She does yeah. reference yeah. the fact that. Derisively. Yes. We're, we're here. Yeah, derisively. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I wrote a thing on Tuesday called the tr- Here's the Truth About, Here's the Truth About Brett Kavanaugh's Finances, because she's, she's writing this thing as if it hasn't occurred to anyone that his wealthy old man is underwriting his existence. And of course it has occurred to us. Yeah. We wrote about it <laughs> yes. and it's very likely that that's the case. The right. problem is he didn't, he didn't fucking say so. And he needs to, and yeah. we need to know. And that she doesn't even say in the articles Zev. I don't know if you, if you read it, she, yeah, I read the her thing. grand point is that, well, obviously if you know anything, you know, it's one of these, these, well, if you know anything about uh, the tax law and the tax code and the blah, yeah. blah, blah, you know, that uh, you don't have to disclose uh, gifts from parents on these things, blah, 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 blah. And then she says, it seems as if his father paid and she used the word seems yes which um being a novelist as she <laughs> you know identifies me i happen to know that the word seems means she has no fucking idea she's yeah. just guessing that's right she's just, guessing. just like that's we are the problem. She knows nothing. right and the problem with that kind of uh quote unquote journalism is it is an opinion piece um that is taking the perjurers word mm-hmm. for what he did so it's like without actually looking at the perjury itself and it proves the perjury it. well act- it proves the perjury but here's what she did mm. here's what she did she then also imbued the word bribe into the discourse now yep. neither greg or i have ever said that kavanaugh mm-hmm. took bribes right um, that is not what what the references of him being owned exactly. and why we use that very specific terminology that he is owned this is a semantic war, and this woman has uh, this journal, whatever, whatever the hell she is. She injected a word that's a, that indicates a, a criminality that we never accuse this man of, but also no one is accusing him of that. And so what happens is now Brett Kavanaugh, if he's faced with the perjury, will confuse that terminology and the folks around him to defend him of conflating the discourse with you're accusing him of taking bribes. He's never taken bribes. This is all a witch hunt. And we're back into that horse shit again. Yep. And so I want everyone to be very acutely aware that this is a game. This, the woman that wrote this for Mother Jones is either knowingly, wittingly or unwittingly playing into an offensive bullshit strike on mm-hmm. Brett Kavanaugh's behalf because they can't answer for the perjury. The perjury exactly. is provable, it's demonstrable, we did it, and this is all we're trying to get call this man on the carpet for, and it cannot be answered by his team. So they have to come up with all this other horse shit and right. conflate us, uh, conflate what we're saying, try, try to make it sound like we're making accusations that can't be substantiated. He is being called, uh, you know, the, the FBI, the 4500 FBI, which also I don't think that was mentioned in our article. No, that's what I'm saying. The half the scandal isn't even there. But, it's like missing. Not even there. So, so White House has, you know, the FBI director has been called to the carpet by uh, Senator White House. I don't, I don't know how many days are left. Maybe only a few. It might be yeah. by next yeah, week. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's clock is ticking. I think it's clock ticking. is ticking. So that article had a timing to it that it, I found incredibly suspect. Right. So we'll see, you know. And I got to say, uh, uh, Professor get, Tribe yeah. we'll chimed see. in too on that and basically yeah. backed it up. And he's wrong there too. And I hate to say that to the Harvard professor, but I mean, it's just not right what he's saying. This is, it's missing the point of the story. And there is a huge investigation that needs to be done. I don't know if they're, you know, related friends, whatever, whatever it is. But I, you know, this is not something that the American people could stand for. We really need to keep our attention on the scandal and not, uh, you know, not by the word of this particular journalist or, or even Professor Tribe in this case, because they're wrong. They're just wrong. This perjury is perjury. And, well, uh, you know, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say the other thing is, you know, he didn't come right out and say it. He was asked where the money came from and he said this, that, and the other. As she pointed out in the article, he hid behind this legalese bullshit. But he mm. never comes right out and says, yeah, my family gave me the money. Mm. So there's two reasons why he didn't do that. The first reason being he's somehow ashamed or embarrassed. I've heard that said a lot. Like he's a look, if you're ashamed that your father is rich and you've lived the way that you've lived, gone to prep school, gone to Yale uh, undergrad, gone to Yale law 
and he's presumably bankrolling you for the, your entire existence. Why are you ashamed? Right. There's nothing exactly. to be ashamed of. You're about to be a Supreme that, and Court if you justice. Are, if you're if you are such a weak person and your self-regard is that fucking weak that you can't mm. admit that for for a one of nine positions on the Supreme Court, then you don't belong there. That's a that's one reason why he why it's it's guessed, why it seems <laughs> like, like he didn't did. answer. Yeah. The other the other reason would be because it isn't it isn't his dad. He wants us to think he wants it to seem right. like it's his dad who bankrolled him when in fact it is not. Those are the two possibilities. Mm -hmm. Those are the only two possibilities. So, you know, because otherwise or he's just trolling us and he's an asshole. I suppose that's a possibility, too. <laughs> you know, he's like, I'm not going to I'm going to get I'm going to I'm going to torment Greg and LB and yes. by, by <laughs> this ridiculous answer. And that's what mm -hmm. I'm going to do. I don't I don't think that I'm important enough to justify that. So, you know, well, not that, at the time of his uh, at the time yeah, of his the, uh, the two confirmation. Um, yeah, you're right. I, I want to say something here. Mm. Here's what I care about. I know that it's the it's the series is called Who Owns Kavanaugh because that was a hashtag that actually uh, pierced people's brains. Right. Okay. And that is so the questions. The questions are to lean into all the financial discrepancies around this guy, but there's more to way more that we pulled out and what we were actually looking at there and what I care about. I don't really care who's holding the, who paid the debt. I think I care that the American people know this, but I, I care that there's a machinery around the behind sitting behind the weaponization of the Supreme court. Exactly. I yep. care about that. I care about this man's participation in that. I care that he's a liar and a perjurer, and he had no compunction to sit there in two confirmation hearings, the first one for the circuit, and then this one for that we just went through in 2018, and lie his ass off, and we can prove the lies now, especially with 2006 lies, because a whole bunch of information came out after that, and as soon as uh, Senator Leahy and Senator Booker were bringing that to the forefront of his 2018 confirmation hearing for the Supreme Court, um, we get Christine Blasey Ford. Mm -hmm. I care about the timing of that. I care about the forces behind that. I care that that this whole system has been gained by dark operatives and that we don't know who's controlling and owning them. Exactly. I care about how the amicus, uh, the amica briefs are getting, are working their way up. I care about this gamesmanship around reversing precedent right and that had the long game that's being played and the intersection there with with all these fucking rock the republican attorney general's association and the state laws i can't this is what i care about i care about corruption mm -hmm. and why other people don't care about corruption is beyond me mm -hmm. and why that is mm -hmm. such a difficult story to tell for anybody, whether they're from Mother Jones to Lawrence Tribe, to just focus on the fucking corruption mm -hmm. is beyond me. So, yeah, I'm sitting here. I'm laying here in pain with my back out, right, flat as I can be, still fucking working my ass off, still on narrative live because I care about fucking corruption. And for five years, I'm trying to bring it to an end. Just bring it to daylight. Just, yeah. Let's just fucking expose some shit and have some daylight on it so we can make some decisions. And every turn we take, out comes someone from seemingly, you know, an impartial news or whatever, mm -hmm. poo-pooing it, collapsing it, making it about something that is it's nowhere near what we're talking about or what we're trying to bring right to. And then some scholar, right, uh, that, that can't keep up with it all is fucking weighing in to put the thumb on the scale for an ego boost. Yeah. Fuck all of you. How about that? How about that for my fucking bed? I say that to all of you. Fuck you all. Start focusing on the corruption. Yeah. Can we not have a corrupt? I don't want to be Belarus. No. I, 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 come <laughs> we on. We like to have a democracy. It works for us. Jesus. You know, says, and I you didn't even mention the forty five hundred, and there's, there's the you know the White House in cahoots with uh, the, the FBI director to hide forty five hundred uh, tips. I mean, that's that's just you know. What's going on here? This is not the way the American justice system ever w worked before, and it's certainly not the way we should be appointing judges to the um, Supreme Court. But you talk a lot about corruption there, and it's a good segue into the other big story of the of the day, uh, which is the sensational uh, 
roadblock, I guess, that these two people have done to uh, the... Oh, just a clown. <laughs> they are they're clowns. Um, Good for you. That's yes, I graphic. quite enjoyed putting together this little, uh, this little, this little poster because... You know, it fits so well with these two. Um, it's really interesting. I mean, basically, it's not over yet, of course, for the Biden agenda. This uh, $3.5 trillion um, you know, infrastructure bill is not going to pass as a $3.5 trillion bill. Now, that's pretty clear. They're offering these two, uh, Kirsten Sinema and John Manchin, are offering to start at $1.5 trillion now, which is kind of a haircut. I mean, it's a very serious haircut to the initial plan. The way Biden is anticipating he can deal with this is merely by shortening the number of years that he's spending the money. So the current plan is 3.5 trillion over 10 years. Well, they're going to say, well, we'll just spend 1.5 trillion over four years. It'll be a four-year infrastructure plan instead. Um, I don't know if that's going to fly, but uh, that's the plan, I think, coming out of the Democratic caucus this evening. But these two people, um, you know, Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin are, you know, barely Democrats. I mean, you could, you, they are by name, but they surely don't act like Democrats. They've had a terrible uh, record. In, and, you know, you might have seen them. This was the Scrooge film, but you might have missed the, the earlier bomb, uh, bomb movie that they had, which was called Betrayal, uh, the true story of how these two Democrat senators yeah. saved dark money and, you know, killed the For the People's Act, which was a fantastic piece of legislation, which, amongst other things, was going to stop anonymous dark money. Uh, being uh, being spent in our politics. That's not going through either. Um, so these so-called Democrats are out there pretending that they are, in fact, um, you know, Democrats, but they're not. And uh, I'll go through some of their, uh, you know, shadier uh, dealings with big oil and some of the other places they get money from. Um, but it is also interesting today that at his, uh, at Joe Manchin's houseboat, which is really not a houseboat, it's sort of a yacht, like an almost yacht, which he, which, where he lives in uh, D.C., that it's nice protests with uh, people coming up in kayaks and, and uh, smaller boats going, don't sink our health care, amongst other things. Um, it's an interesting piece of, uh, of, of information about uh, Manchin. He's, this is a 65-foot uh, houseboat or yacht. I mean, it's classified as a yacht because it's over 40 feet. Uh, valued at seven, oh, that's a lot of zeros. Uh, uh, yeah, $700,000. Um, it's valued at $700,000, and it's... Uh, he paid for it, $220,000, because he got it on, on auction. But that's a steep discount. But it's actual value, $700,000, which is not bad for a guy who earns, what, $174,000 a year. Uh, oh. And uh, his net worth is $6 million. He is That is the place, by the way, where all these deals are apparently take place. All these senators and congressmen show up there, and they negotiate these you know, behind-the-scenes deals um, on that yacht. So it's famous for that. But, you know... This guy is not what you would call a typical Democrat. He's uh, regularly on the phone to uh, billionaires. In a, remember, there was that leaked Zoom call where he's conferring with billionaires about the far left and the dangers of the far left. The, he apparently, according to AOC, huddles with Exxon every week because Democrats do that. They do. They they. They must, I guess, uh, huddle with Exxon. And he's got a huge amount of money, $6 million you, you saw there was his total value um, in terms of his personal value. But there's a lot more money from family investments in coal and fossil fuels. So I'll get into cinema in a second, but let's talk a little bit about Joe here. He's, uh, why, why are we spending so much time giving him any attention? Do you guys have any thoughts on that? He likes because he it. wants it. He knows how yeah. to get it. He wants it. He loves it. Yeah. You know, this is the guy who, when Trump was in the office, remember, and he called, they were all doing the tax bullshit before. He was one of the few Democrats that, the, that Mitch McConnell knew to bring over to the swap over to the, to the Trump White House. And they were all, whatever they were talking about, they just went the Donnie Two Scoops. I, it came with, up with that, <laughs> <laughs> with that uh, mob nickname for Donald because he, the reporting was he had to have two scoops of ice cream. Everybody else had one. Right. <laughs> John Manchin was obsessed with like trying to figure out how to make a scoop of ice cream with like a big tablespoon that was hot and turn it into the shape of an egg. And he even like Instagrammed it or whatever and videoed it. It was a dust. I don't think we're dealing with a very bright bulb here. Number one, I get that, that everybody has to, for whatever reason, 
say all his colleagues, Democrats, have to all first, before they say anything critical about him or what he's doing in this moment, have to talk about he's their friend and they love him and he's a nice guy. This guy's so fucking fragile that everybody seems to around him seems to know you have to pet his ego every 10 right. seconds right? or, you know, or he might blow shit up. I don't like that he's been handed all this power, but that's because of our margin. I think we, you know, this is 2022 could not be more important. My God, do we have to just make these people insignificant with, with our numbers? Mm. It's kind of possible. It's going to be hard to do, but we got to go for it. Actually, the polling it's today my, that came out looked quite good. My I, big I, thing about quite good thing. on the yeah, uh, I, next year. Sorry, go ahead. But again, he's got he's getting his money from the same corrupt forces as mm -hmm. the people that he uh, seems determined to uh, uh, vote along with, which is the GOP. He's not yeah. interested in being a Democrat. He's not. He, and just he, because you're in with with disgusting sources of money uh, and corrupt sources of money, that doesn't make you a centrist. And so he's conflating all of that as well by saying he's a centrist. He's not a centrist, guys. He's just a he's just a blueish, you know. He's got a little more purple to his red on the Republican side. He's when your money's coming from the same place, it's a problem. It's a problem. That place is the Chamber of Commerce. You know, he gets a which is a coke backed. Uh, Com, um, right. chamber so you know that's where he gets his 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 money i think a lot of people say that um but you're right he doesn't act like a democrat he doesn't act like a centrist he's sort of on the edge there and i think the whoever is funding him is quite brilliant strategically to get him in there as a democrat it's sort of it's a nice fail safe if the republicans can't uh, kill something then he'll do it um and he can sort of masquerade as a as a democrat and and in reality you know kill Dark, the, 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 the one bill that was going to save American democracy from the original sin of American democracy, which is that you know, we allowed corporate money into our election system. We've now, you know, he killed that. He's the one who killed that, him and cinema of all people. So, you know, you really have to question uh, who he is, his morality, and also why, uh, you know, why he's there. And I do think it's that it's Coke money that's funding him at the end of the day. I think you have to look at, you know, we, we talk about Republicans and Democrats, and sometimes I think the um, the tribalism gets to be a bit much. At this yeah. stage of the game, you really have to look at, look, are you for democracy or not? Mm -hmm. You either are or you're not. And this guy right now is not. He's he's playing for the bad guys. He's like the fact that he's on a fucking yacht. Mm hmm. That's called Almost Heaven, West Virginia, like with, with a John Denver uh, nod as if, oh, we get it. You're so clever, Joe Manchin. Yeah. Right. Um, the polling in his state indicates that I think something like between 70 and, and 80 something percent of the people want, you know, the, the infrastructure bill because it's really going to help yeah. West Virginia. And his constituents are not idiots. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. As with Mississippi, West Virginia is a place that people make fun of that aren't from there. But there's plenty of really smart people in West Virginia who know what the fucking score is. This guy is yeah. not working for them. So and, and it's often, you know, you hear that about him. Well, he's the only way a Democrat can get elected in uh, West Virginia. Is, how do we know that's true? That's just a line. Mm -hmm. You know, this guy is corrupt. I don't you know, he is corrupt. He's, there's the, we haven't even mentioned the shit with his daughter and the EpiPen and all right. that. Oh, my God. Yeah. And look at him. He's an ugly man who thinks he's handsome, which I can't stand. I hate his fucking face. <laughs> he looks a little bit. He's a slightly <laughs> handsomer Mike Flynn. You know, uh, yeah. I don't want to look at his fucking ugly fucking face ever again. Like, really, he's <laughs> awful. Get off the TV, Joe Manchin. But he thinks he's wonderful. He thinks he's hot stuff. He thinks he's George fucking Clooney or something. And he ain't. And that's yeah. that's what it's about. So, yeah, this guy is owned. You know, he he just he does what he's told. Nothing that he says makes any goddamn sense. I like when the media tries to like, well, you know, Manchin said this, but then he did that. Well, that's because he doesn't give a shit. He's right. just saying stuff. He doesn't have a position other than doing what his whore masters tell him to do. That's his yeah. job. And he's and, done it effectively. Uh, he's can, done a really good job. For it, so here, here's the other part of this. And it's, it's true for cinema as well. Um, we are the part where we can come back to the party. Yes, it's Democrat. Are you are you for democracy or are you anti-democratic? That that actually is it. 
right? Mm-hmm. It's not, and, and one party is all in on anti-democratic and, and, and a drive towards fascism and authoritarianism. It just is. It's right. unfortunate, but it just is. There's a couple of exceptions in there, we think. Um, and he, the, he and cinema are these actors inside of a, the other party that want to enable that. So where, when it becomes a party issue, it's like the messaging around just even this, uh, the messaging around the 3.5 trillion is, is so poor, right? It's like, yeah. it's a 10 year plan. That's 350 billion a year. We can afford it. It's, it, it, it's half of our defense budget, which we know from this point forward just got drastically reduced because we're not in a war in Afghanistan anymore. Right. And yeah. it's like, there's money for this. It, it, it's, it's a totally doable thing or it wouldn't be put on the table. And it's necessary. It's so necessary. We have to, we have to do a big change right now. We just do have to do a big investment into our nation, into our like fucking America first, everybody. Look at these fuckers, right? Yeah, exactly. You know talking about that? Like it's, it's not the messaging for the, for the Democrats uh, around all of this from on the Hill and their ability to connect to the media that is friendly with them, which is not a lot, frankly, um, and, and connect with folks like us that have a voice in social media or are influencers in sort of what you would call political social media, even just specifically political Twitter, is just, it's awful. It's a mess. That's the mess. You know, Republicans have been able to to have a hive mind. They, they've been able to plug their brains into whatever the factory is that is churning out semantics and churning out the, the talking points and connecting those to kind of the agenda of the money behind them. Yeah. And, it, and, and it's across their media. It's across their, it's across the social media platforms from the different actors that they've got, you know, is that are connected to the party. They all do it as a force, right? They, they're in sync. They know what roles they all play. There's an incredible coordination around all of it. And, it's, and there's clear, clearly sort of think tanking behind all of that because they're not really interested in policy or realness or executing anything. They've just mastered the poor shit. That's right. what they've mastered. And they're, and they're connected to in, within that. Also, there's a radicalization element within that when it comes to the embrace of the white nationalism, the embrace mm-hmm. of, the, of the domestic terrorism, the embrace of the, of the anti-vax to get people, oh, the embrace of all of this misery, all of this horribleness that they're just embracing because they, it's a way of consolidating power and it's a way of doing, it's a path towards dismantling democracy itself. Absolutely. You would think that in the face of stakes like that, that the machine around the, the Democratic Party, right, for which these politicians find themselves in the halls of power, could get their shit together around the messaging. At the right. very least, get your shit together around the messaging and coordinating it. And instead, they snipe at one another, right? Or if there's any kind of coordination, they put out a really terrible semantic that loses us seats in the next election right and, and so uh, you know and this should be gating us seats that is, yeah, this, I mean, exactly. you've got the republican party basically opposing every sensible thing the government could ever do i mean everything from bridges to broadband to uh you know um, right. supporting child care supporting they, it's like all the stuff that you'd really want, want, want to give right. people they to, yeah they just they really just want to be oligarchs they really do yeah, so they don't care about they the, just, they don't, you at they're all. Done. They're done with democracy. They done, yeah. they, 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 you know, they're just done with it. It just didn't, it didn't work out for them and their power the yeah. way they needed it to. They, they don't want to, you know, and so they've got the fear mongering and got, it's all just very highly coordinated. It's connected to what we were saying before about the, the corruption happening and the gaming of our legal system so that we could overturn precedent um, right. when it comes to our rights on October 2nd, tomorrow. We will, women will be marching again in the mm-hmm. face of a pandemic. I hope we have a good turnout, but we'll be there marching and speaking towards what the, you know, this sort of vast anti-democratic and very uh, force out there, but also the specificity of, of Texas and that law 
and how it's looking to just go right through women's bodies uh, as as fascists always do and authoritarians always do and strong men always do, mm. right? It's always women's bodies. It's always LGBTQ. It's those rights are always on the front lines in a democracy. That's what that's what the fascists have to roll through and roll over and strip and suppress. It's connected to the voting rights. It's all, this is a playbook and they have semantics for the playbook and the Democrats need a playbook for shoring up democracy and everyone needs to get on that page. And I refuse to believe there's not as much money out there to help fund that. You don't have to match the vast sums of money funding the other shit because mm. I know there's foreign money in there and it, we probably can't. There's a lot can't. of money. And there's more a, money there. There's underworld money in there. The dark money. You don't have to match the dark money. You just have to match the what's required in to actually go toe to toe with them. And it's not a lot. It's not as much as you would think. I, we've got all these billionaires running around, these tech billionaires. And where are they? Where are these supposed liberal minding gajillionaires <laughs> with all of their money? Great. We're going to get there in a second. They? We're going to get there in a second. Yeah. Um, We're going to get there. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Can I make, I want to yeah, make two points about, about messaging and the Democrats. Okay. Just as, just as a, it's harder to message when you're trying to create something rather than destroy it. The GOP message is one of divisiveness. It's one of blame. It's one of riling up hate. It's really fucking easy to do that. If you're that, if you're that lousy of a person and your entire fucking platform is about let's blame immigrants, let's blame the LGBTQ community, let's blame women. If that's your entire platform in your existence, it's really, really easy to get that message out. It's fucking dumb. You can understand it if you have a 65 IQ, right? It's mm. stupid. That's why, that's one of the reasons why these assholes are so good at messaging, because the message is idiotic and they're idiotic and the people that are soaping it up are idiotic. So when you create something, when you're providing hope, when you're providing plans and you're actually trying to introduce meaningful legislation that will work that's much harder you can see it like if you look at bernie sanders versus hillary clinton okay mm -hmm. bernie sanders so good at messaging he really is we're gonna break up the banks we need a minimum wage that's livable blah, 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 blah. but when it comes to actually you know doing anything bernie sanders is useless he's a scold and he's a a, a machine that trots out these these platitudes okay hillary the reason she lost or one of them is because she never condescended to people. She never condescended to the voters. If you asked her a question about, hey, what should we do about X? She would give you an intelligent, informative answer. So when you're trying to do that as a Democrat, which you're trying to do because you're actually trying to solve the fucking problems that we have, it's harder. It's harder to get the message out because the message itself is nuanced and difficult. Look at the vaccine thing, okay? The vaccine, the anti-vax thing, the anti-mass thing, trying to equate it with freedom, the 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 the, that's a Neanderthal mentality that can understand that. To get to the point where you can grasp that you getting vaccinated is necessary to save everyone around you requires a higher level of thinking. It just does mm -hmm. a higher level and of maturity. thinking. Hi and yes, maturity. Yes, empathy, mature, all of these things. So yeah. it's not the same. What the, the message that they're trying to get out is not the same. They are basically the, the the GOP is some dumbass show on the networks, and the Democrats are the the HBO show that wins the Oscars or, right. or the Emmys. Rather, <laughs> that's gonna, okay, that's, that's the difference. Yeah, uh, we, we're operating at a higher level of intellect and and uh, purpose here. That's just the reality right now. I wish it wasn't the case. Didn't mm. used to be this way. Republicans had lots of good ideas. Mm -hmm. until not that long ago but they have abandoned this this is all gone the only thing left is voter suppression tax cuts and and fear-mongering and hatred yeah and if that's all you have to do really easy to get that message out so we have a we you know it's harder for us it just is and that's it, i want to at least say that it's not the same thing it's not a it's not an not equal equal. balanced it is not and in fact what we're witnessing now with what we've been talking about with kavanaugh and what we've been talking now with cinema and, and mansion and this the degrading of our democracy this is how democracy gets killed you know it's not going to we're not actually going to see a murder 
we're going to see a slowly dripping away or tearing away of the fabric of our democracy. And this is what it looks like when we install judges that are corrupt, when we um, you know, find corrupt politicians to kill policy that makes complete sense and should be, in, should be implemented for the American people. That's how democracy dies. And you know, this when is- When you have media machines, yeah. media, cable news, uh, whole cable news that, and, and their uh, print or, or online uh, publication partners pushing out collapsed, uh, you know, uh, uh, intentionally pushing out horseshit. Yeah. Right. And not even not even doing the basics of journalism, just carrying talking points mm-hmm. or, or making money from outrage. That also is a huge part of why we're here. I, I did get to see some journalists. There was someone who did a big mea culpa. I can't remember who it was just earlier this week on all of that. Of like, you can't you, you, with this whole drive to sort of both sides, everything all the time. Mm-hmm. As if that's somehow fairness or, or doing your job uh, and how, uh, how wrong that is. And, and then I saw someone sent a great graphic and you guys, I know you saw this. Of both, uh, it, it's not a fair thing. If you bring someone on, it says it's raining outside. And then mm-hmm. you bring someone else on that says, no, it's not. Your job as a journalist is not to say, well, look, there we, brought, we presented both sides. Your job is to walk fucking outside and see if it's raining. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. This whole balance That's thing job. is not actually a good idea for journalism. It's, uh, you know, the Reagan, what was it? Uh, the fairness doctrine is, you know, it, the fairness doctrine is not a sensible thing because it equally weights both sides of any argument. But one side of an argument can be complete bullshit and doesn't need to be included into any reporting. Where, and the other side could be completely accurate and should be dominating an article. But there is this thing that we've got to be completely balanced, which is not great when you've got a party that only pushes lies and, and you know, myths about vaccines or, or uh, COVID and then is trying to, you know, destroy yeah, democracy and, and, on the other hand and, and install a dictator. I mean, that you shouldn't be giving just, equal weight to. Just taking the liars, the known liar's word for mm. something and saying that that's journalism yeah. is uh, which is what that that mother jones article did mm-hmm. she didn't call up she didn't talk to did she get a hold of the dad did she go and try to yeah. get the bank did she she's got a fucking budget we don't have a budget but it we seems it seems that the dad did it so you know it's it's insane it's yeah. really 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 damaging us uh, we can't the reason we need a free press in order for a democracy to advance and why it's protected in the constitution is we need them to actually do the job and the work of the press and, and not whatever this is that they've decided being journalism, journalism is now. Um, yeah. And I, 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 you know, we, we, we call, always go back to this and we end up talking about it over and over and over again, but it, I don't want to keep repeating that, but it's just, it's, we've got to somehow clean up that house that yeah. the fourth estate has got to get fire hosed. Um, it's just a, it's a disaster. It's a it really disaster. is a disaster and it's not getting any better. I mean, especially on the right, it's there, shocking. There's a, um, Orwell has a line about it and I'm, I'm going to butcher it or paraphrase it. And he says, um, you know, basically journalism, it, the, the purpose of journalism is to print what someone else doesn't want to have in print. Right. Everything <laughs> else is public relations. That's what that's he said. Good, yeah. So that's true. That's, that's it. true. Yeah. yeah. No, it is true. Yeah. It's, it's a really good way yeah. of looking at it. You should never be, I mean, as a journalist, you, you know, you're always going to be unpopular. You should be unpopular with the people you're writing about, I think. Um, <laughs> Greg, let's talk about Facebook because you're, you had a, a great uh, podcast this morning on Prevail. Um, I say this morning, of course, it's out there for everybody whenever they want to hear it. But uh, I, you know, I listen to you on Friday mornings and it's, it has to do with Facebook as a, as a state. Explain to people exactly um, what that means. Why do, you, why do you think that Facebook is operating as a state? Well, we had, you know, this is not my idea, I should say. I, I had Carrie Kukral on the show, who's great. You can follow her on yeah. Twitter. She's somebody that's out there really trying, who, who, who has worked as a biomedical engineer and, and, and in media and tech media and stuff like that. And she's trying to really figure out how all this stuff kind of fits together. Zev, that you talk about often on on your show, you know, Epstein and yeah. that money and Ghislaine Maxwell and um, yep. how that money infiltrated uh, the tech sector and the science sector and and that kind of thing. Which is not academia, something I, yeah, in academia too, yeah, yeah, all of it. Which is not something, frankly, that I know much about. So I had her on and was asking her questions about it. It's a great interview. You know, she mm. she's cool, smart, really smart person. Um, and interesting. And one of the things she said in the interview was, um, we were talking about, I asked her about Facebook and 
you know, how to deregulate it, how to combat it. And she said, we, somebody to the effect of, we, you know, it's amazing from the 90s to now how much things have changed and how these social media companies, these tech companies have taken on the role of a state, mm -hmm. like a state meaning a country. And that we really have to have to reckon with that, how, um, you know, what that means for us as individuals and as governments and, and, and stuff like that. So she said that. And then in the Atlantic this week, um, before my podcast came out, but after the interview was recorded, uh, Adrian LaFrance, the, the the editor there, wrote this great piece also about sort of comparing Facebook. She called it a hostile foreign power, which mm -hmm. I thought was great. It was it's a great that, line. That's yeah. a, that's, the Atlantic it's article is really, really good. Like it's mm. it's it's very bang on, but it's also beautifully written. And, um, you know, and she listed like, you know, what makes a state? Well, you need you need a couple of things. You need land. OK, they don't have land. That's the only thing they don't have. They yeah. have their own currency now. They have their own ethos and their, their philosophy yeah. of thinking, and they have people. They have there's, there's almost three billion people on Facebook, yeah. which is and they write the laws. An insane amount of money. Yeah. Yes. Um, now, you know, how do we reckon with that? With some, and, we, and it's run by this guy who thinks he's a fucking Roman emperor from from the fourth century. So, <laughs> and looks like one. Uh, yeah. Frankly, he looks like Gordy in the second a little bit. If you want to Google Gordy oh, yeah. in the second, there's Mark Zuckerberg, maybe El Gabalus oh, a little bit. You know. He's got yeah. this, and and he does this. Yeah. LB does this, I think, by design. He's got the guy's worth 143 yeah. billion dollars. He can afford. Yeah. He can get a better haircut. He can't. Um, <laughs> Shoes is not. He to. said he is a puppet. He for sure is a puppet. I mean, he, he for is sure is a, a puppet. Fraud. He's yeah. a wooden boy, and he will never become a real boy. No, no. So stop. Yeah. And he's he acts. I mean, he, he's obviously acting under the influence of foreign governments. I mean, that's not even like a, you know, that is that's, it's a great line that she had there. But it is. It's a that he gets fed not only money, but he gets. I think he's you know he's marching orders from from external sources that are not American, perhaps. Well, I'm probably they're not talking about the check that yeah. he got. I'm yeah. probably talking about the check that he got. Yeah. No one's willing to do that. Why yeah. was he forcing Kaspersky a software in the shadows as a download mm -hmm. on all new Facebook users and adopters after he took a couple hundred million from the Kremlin? Why was he there for the launch of Mail.ru? What, mm -hmm. what, what is this fucking guy up to? And he supposedly he was been a up to no good. I, I, and I will continue to say, and I said this in 2017, all roads lead back to Larry Summers as well. Mm -hmm. And that needs to really be looked at and dug into. Because I think that, you know, they were just identifying, okay, here's a really good future data fucketeer, this kid yeah. that act, easily hacked into our easily hackable database that created this app that's born out of this, again, uh, sort of a hatred and an incel movement towards women. Perfect for the Kremlin. Perfect for a, a, an anti-democratic agenda, right? If it lets Let's help this kid along. Next thing you know, Peter Thiel's giving him everything he needs. And next thing you know, after that, when he burns through a tremendous amount of cash that he's having a, a burn rate that is unsustainable without going public. Right. Um, because they didn't, have, they didn't have a revenue model yet. He's heading over to the Kremlin when Medvedev is in there and get taken up hundreds of million dollars from uh, Alisha Usmanov and Yuri Milner. And mm -hmm. the platform magically transforms into all these other things. Come on. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, easiest, it's, again, it, it's so in our I wrote this faces. in 2017. I did a four part series on, on all of this Why in 2017. It? It's now like four years, what, five years later. Um, and it's not, you know, no one's picking, no one's written about this in, in the mainstream media. I don't think, like, I don't think people have really gone back in there and said, what was Mark doing in, 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 in the Kremlin there? What was the conversation? What are the conversations that he had? Why does VK or the, you know, the uh, Russian version of Facebook look exactly like Facebook? How come it's exactly like Facebook? Yeah. You know, I mean, there's just yeah, questions okay, around that okay. that you have to. Ask. And he's, you know, he supposedly personally was quite liberal for a period of time, very you know supportive of Obama during okay. his early years. But then suddenly yeah. Trump sweeps in, and and the entire editorial policy, if they, if they have one, which it seems like they do, uh, it swings to Donald Trump. Now every every one of their top ten shared stories every week is by one of these right wing podcasters, and uh, you know, it's like it's a it's this continuing, it's this really remarkable shift, which could only happen if you did it intentionally. I mean, it's not like America shifted that quickly. So it's, you know, there's something going inside that's, that's very dangerous. I think that's bullshit too. I, 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 
Like, I don't understand why Ben Shapiro's show is constantly number one in these oh, Facebook yeah. things. Like, Facebook is a lot of old people. Like, I don't, I don't get that. It doesn't track. Like, old it people track. don't want to listen to this young whippersnapper talking garbage. I, I don't know. You know, it's just, it's, you know Jack Pizobiak had a podcast that he just launched. And it was number one for like okay. three weeks and then it disappeared. I don't know where it's gone, mm. but uh, he got to number one. Like oh. Yeah, it launched oh. at number one. And I'm like, huh. <laughs> How did you say I ran? How did you do that? <laughs> How did, did you do that, Jack? That, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just making fun. I'm just, I'm just making jokes. Yeah. We're joking around. It's Friday night. It's the after show. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh <laughs> what was i gonna say i don't know <laughs> you're gonna say you were talking about uh, podcasts and you know, the numbers in the right wing um, slant of oh, I, had, I didn't write it down i had such a great point and now i forget it so i don't know I'm okay that's my, okay i'm gonna eat my second cherry is what i'm gonna do instead you eat your second cherry. You just, what's the time it's it's to me. if only there was someone to bring me a cocktail oh uh, yeah well oh, this is interesting i've never seen lb do a show without her cocktail so that's uh no, we're not seeing the I usual peak it, that, that comes towards the end of the show <laughs> That's not true. I don't always have one, but I would say at this moment, uh, I you know it's oh boy. Huh. Okay, yeah. let's let's move on. We're giving you yeah, a virtual so, drink. Uh, have a virtual look, cocktail. Look at, here's the other thing to remember about Facebook that I think is really important mm. for everyone to explain. I'm not on it. I have had to delete it twice. I'm sure it's active again. Um, uh, yeah. They, they it, it, there's a it is malware it is you guys it, it operates functionally like malware um it's yeah. there on your devices not for you to be on it or using it but for it to scrape your data yeah. and usage from everything else for it to Spy. track you for it to find you for it to it is it is spyware is it so um it, it and then they turn around and they sell that mm -hmm. which they do and we know, and if you just even look at what, what, what it's, it just as a, a sliver of the, of the horrible, the horror show that is Mark, Mark and Cheryl Sandberg, frankly, Cheryl Sandberg, just leaning fully into self-harm of young girls right now. Yes. And pushing algorithms down. That Instagram getting, story uh, into is the, in, Into the Instagram and getting these girls and then denying it. So, and then, and then, but, oh, okay, that was our own research and we're going to deny it and we're going to come up with some bullshit story. And they present like some woman who's like a blonde techie looking Silicon Valley mm. safe space. And she talks in their garbly gook jargon. And then, so the other, the other thing going on here is it's malware. It's spying on us. It's sold to people who then have bad intentions and algorithms are then pushed down onto our children so that they will harm themselves, which is further fracturing society and further just sort of just, mantling democracy right mm. um because it's just making everything chaotic and everything uh miserable and and defeating people and fucking up our lives right yeah. so that they for profit you're gonna have to love yourself more than you love cheryl sandberg's money yeah and that's Again, this the kind is another... of magic that we need to keep pushing on there what do you love more you love your teenage daughter being mm. alive or life or do you like cheryl sandberg's bank account because that's the choice. Choose. And again, this is how democracy looks like when it's dying. This is the you know this is what it's the death of it's democracy dead. looks like. It's when foreign. I remember what I was going to say. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. No, no, no. Go ahead, Seth. No, no. That was that was basically that. That was it. It was this is okay, just a good example. Wanna, I didn't interrupt. I, um, you can interrupt. I just didn't want you. Anytime. I didn't want you to move on until we. we no, no, no. Um, we're not going to move no. on. No. She said in the Atlantic, hostile foreign power, but it's more than that. It is because, you know, as LB pointed out, it, it would not exist in its current form without mm -hmm. money from a actual hostile foreign power. Right. Basically, it's a hostile foreign power has installed this other hostile foreign power into mm -hmm. our lives. But it's like when the Soviets put Castro in Cuba. But yeah. instead of that dude, it's like they've installed him in our brain. You know, it's really, really vicious. And that's right. Fa Facebook doesn't have the power that the East I British East India Company had when they ran India for a hundred years and could like execute people and start yeah. wars and stuff. It can't do that yet. But, but it, it is. has it so can. much mind control. The, the yeah. mind control that it has, I think, arguably makes it even more powerful, which is scary because that 
those that company was really 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 powerful yeah but look they are killing people i think you know their 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 covid and yeah, vax and, and anti-vax yeah. thing is killing people there's no doubt about it myanmar is another example absolutely they're killing yeah. people and they're yeah. influencing the world policy and and politics in a way which is you know extraordinary so i don't think it's happened anytime since then you're right to point out the east india company so there's yeah. a um you know it, they're dangerous and they're above the law they don't seem to uh in the entire the silicon law. valley does impossible. not get any any justice like there's no law and order ever around them it's just they're always they're the ones setting their own rules they're self-regulating that no one can seem to you know accuse them of any crimes or find them guilty of any crimes so they're so powerful and yet you know it does except for theramos i guess but you know that that's an example uh, uh, an exception there where's everybody else you know where there are clearly crimes committed by um okay, by yes. zuckerberg including perjury as well like i mean he's lied in front of congress why are these things yeah, but why? Uh, yeah. The... Sorry, go ahead. No, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, it's okay. I, I, I it's okay. Go ahead. Uh, so let's bring this all back around to how you started the show, mm. right? Um, in that, first of all, it, to work in that company, you have to be brainwashed yourself. I, I, I think they're in a bubble there, all those employees. And so for us to keep doing this, hopefully, will be like the most shameful thing. For anyone, to, it, I would love for them to lose their workforce. I don't know that it would make a damn bit of difference because of the type of assistance I think Mark Zuckerberg can always have available to him. Mm -hmm. um, but to bring this back around to um, the what is actually in that reconciliation package, that $3.5 trillion, one of the big things in there is to put tremendous resources back into the Treasury in terms of the FinCEN uh, the, uh, the folks that track down anti-money laundering, mm -hmm. the folks that track down tax fraud, the folks, the folks that actually did the job that took down Al Capone, right? right, right. So if you're these, these punks, and I'm sorry they are, and the, who are also frauds, who are also clearly have, there, there can be criminality found in a lot of what they're doing. And as you said, Zev, even down to something as simple, but seemingly not a crime since Kavanaugh of perjuring yourself, um, uh, you know, lying under oath, there's plenty to go after when it comes to these tech companies to mm -hmm. actually start uh, n not just uh, getting the money, but, you know, separating them from anything that they might be doing in terms of laundering money coming from dark sources uh, through their tech, uh, uh, but taxing them. Um, and I don't think it's just a tax equation why there's the Koch brothers and everybody else is so against this. I think it's the investigatory power that would come into where does this fucking money come from mm -hmm. and what are you enabling with it? Exactly. I, yeah. I do. I think that's the fear point and why there's such a need to shut down the reconciliation package. I think it comes down to the IRS. I mean, Facebook and is not what, just for tax sorry. numbers. Yeah. Facebook is what elected Donald Trump. I mean, we know that. That's not a theory. That's an actual fact. That's how he got all his yeah. funding was through Facebook. That's how all the misinformation was spread was through Facebook. That's how they did it. So it's not like it's not just like an accidental observer of this thing. It is the scene of a crime, um, probably the biggest political crime in American history. And yet they seem to be able to get away with it just because I don't know what it's a billion dollars of 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 rev of uh, in the of the economy every year. Well, get rid of the billion dollars. You know, we want our democracy back. We don't need Facebook. There's no need for Facebook. We we're quite fine before Facebook, and we'll find other ways to be socially in, you know, in touch with each other um, online after Facebook is gone. It's not even been around for longer than what twelve. I don't know how old it is, but it's not that it's not a very old company. We can survive without Facebook. It's okay to shut the thing down because it's the scene of a criminal event. Um, you know, th these guys are absolutely criminals. And there's a, a lawsuit right now uh, making its way through Rhode Island, I think, that uh, is proves that they covered up everything around uh, Cambridge Analytica. They were only concerned about their own um, PR and how they were perceived in the public and behind the scenes they were going to extraordinary lengths to cover up the entire scandal around Cambridge Analytica which they were intimately involved with I mean it's not this is not a not an accident we are here because of Facebook oh I love all of what you just said there yeah, you go it's really good it's really good I should also say that yeah, on Tuesday show that's it 
uh, the, the author of the book, The Contrarian, which is uh, the Peter Thiel book, Peter Thiel and Silicon Valley's Pursuit of Power. Ooh, yeah, Max yeah, Chafkin yeah. is coming on the show on Tuesday uh, at 7 oh, p.m. Oh, that'll be a good one. Yes, I think it's, it's, a, uh, it's a darn yeah, good yeah. book. It's a good book. He doesn't, uh, he goes uh, places with, with yeah, Thiel. Yeah. And I, you know, Thiel, Thiel, I guess, is so despicable. I mean, really, really, really another reason why uh, Mark Zuckerberg was, was, was enabled throughout all those years. And basically, I think, you know, sort of moved Zuckerberg away from the left wing into uh, this fascist state that he's he's in right now. I mean, I think that's it all Teal's work in terms of uh, of uh, Zuckerberg's evolution. I guess if you can call it Ugh. that. Um, <laughs> one one quick 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 thing: Facebook isn't just Facebook. Instagram is also owned by mm -hmm. Facebook. So people yeah. have said in the comments, "Yeah, no, no kids are on Facebook." That's true. All kids are on Instagram. Like right. Instagram is how they, you know, basically it's one of the one of the methods in which they all communicate. And WhatsApp, so. and WhatsApp, which is a huge other app. I mean, those th those three things. There's so much data yeah. flowing Snapchat through. The, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, but WhatsApp is owned by uh, Facebook. So you've got th between those three companies, there's so much data that they have. They know who you're talking to. They know they know everything about you. They really, really do, and they can and they can manipulate you in ways that we have no idea. Um, it's just you know, there's no reason for anything that size. You. Yeah, we're handing it all over to them. Yeah. We're giving yeah. it to them. And they're making money off your data, which is another they're thing. Right. But the irony but the irony of it all of it is if everyone stopped using it tomorrow, the entire company would die. Yeah. He would just be Tom from MySpace with a bad haircut. You know? <laughs> it's and so that's true. What we have to make of him. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think there's grounds to shut down the company. I really do. They're so wormed into everything else. Um that it's you can that's what i'm trying to say is you don't mm. have to use it at all he owns yeah. you they own I you know, because of the way that that the way that it works so i come back to it again but if everybody left that company tomorrow i mean just honestly how how does anyone go to sleep at night that works there how can they do yeah. it they so, have, I mean, they have lost a lot of people a, i think but not, uh, not all people. They have a cult mindset going on there. They have, it has to be one of those, you know, it's Nexium, but with data. It, it, it's, and they, it's just, there's a, there's a, it's like a multi-level marketing company, mm -hmm. right? It, 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 it's fused with, I don't know what, with Nexium. That's what it is. It right? is that and, kind of and libertarian right. thinking, right? From Peter Thiel. Um, and and a really in shitty user eyes. interface. It, it looks like shit too. It's a yeah. crappy, unesthetically pleasing interface. You know what would happen if it, if they if Zuckerberg lost all his staff is they would just make it out of Russia because they would have to over there. That's and what I'm saying. It, yeah, I mean yeah. it's just yeah that's it's not like they have principles. Um, speaking of you know cult like behavior, we've been covering a narrative this week the anti vax movement and particularly uh, this this woman here, Dr. Simone Gold, who's who's mm. gone from being an insurrectionist that she is in the, in the middle of the Capitol to preaching anti-vax stuff. Uh, she started the uh, white coat summit, which is basically the launch of all the COVID denial and the launch of all the anti-vax thinking that's been going on. Um, she's now onto homeschooling and you know, going after your school boards and bankrupting uh, your school boards. Uh, and uh, we had uh, Dr. Nick Sawyer, who, was, uh, who started this organization called Dr. No License for Disinformation, uh, .org, so is the URL, which, is, which works towards de taking away the licenses of doctors like Dr. Gold because they're spreading lies um, around COVID and, and vaccinations. So, uh, you know, this week we found out after all of that reporting that they're making millions of dollars off their anti-vaccination um, efforts oh, here. So in, in two months alone, they made $6.7 million, um, you know, for selling everything from ivermectin to whatever else they do for to, to push these lies. I mean, this is an industry built on lies that is built on killing people. And she's still a doctor who can operate uh, under the under the boards of these uh, you know state medical boards. So we're put, we just want to remind people that that website is a website that you can go to and you can tell them about any doctors that are pushing anti-vaccination lies, um, you know, as science when they're absolutely lying. Uh, I think it's a great uh, it's a great way to get at these doctors and at least have some stakes for them. So I thought I'd mention that towards the end of the show here because here we are. Thank you, Seth. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, you know, thanks, Seth, for for staying on this these types of news stories mm -hmm. that um, that if we had a little bit more support. 
um, could be pushed up, which is the point of narrative, right? Yeah. Could be pushed up into um, a discourse so people could actually see it. Because I can't think of anything uh, more valuable than disarming um, anti-vax uh, doctors and even nurses. Yeah. Um, it, 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 if you, they're out there using their license to spread all of that, they're actually doing harm. I mean, it's also because it gets the Hippocratic Oath. So I, I, I appreciate you. For well, doing it really that. is. Really they're do. killing millions. I mean, we, we cost seven million lives. Sorry, seven hundred thousand lives in America. Uh, yeah, yeah. This yesterday or the day before. I mean, it's a, yeah. it's it's that's a you know unthinkable that we've lost that many people to this disease. Yeah. Uh, this is not a great fun way to end the show. As I'm just realizing, we're at the end of the show. So we should try to think of another. Um, oh, uh, I have some, something. Okay, go for it. Okay, okay. Good, I got Greg. Pull us out of this. I got I, 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 hey, that's Greg. <laughs> LB, I'm going to ask you this because uh, well, you, yeah. you can both answer. Is there something inherently like attractive about Corey Lewandowski? Is he like the sexy guy? <laughs> oh, I don't understand. <laughs> he's like he's with you know Hope Hicks is is nice looking and 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 Christy what's her nose she's evil but she's nice looking and it, Corey Lewandowski like I, I I don't get it I just I don't understand it I mean uh, I, there's been a lot of madness. That? There's been a lot of madness in the world, but I, I just, I, I, I give up. I don't even know what to say. I mean, I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> you I mean... really want me to answer this? Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, no, yeah. it is a rhetorical question. It is a rhetorical question. <laughs> but, you know, he's, how, so he finally got fired, I guess. That was the end of his uh, Trump world existence, um, which is surprising that that's the reason that fire him, considering that the boss is who the boss is. But there you go. Some people can have different standards for Look, people, people get off on power they mm. get off on power and if if this is a guy swimming in there with the with the with women who really get off on power and really corrupt women um of which there are many um and they all seem to uh find themselves in the, around that former president um and he's in there uh bringing sexuality into the aphrodisiac that they all were having about their own sense of power growing, then mm -hmm. that's something, you know, he's going to have to deliver on that. And so maybe there's a magic wand in there somewhere, but uh, you know, so he should just be sort of like the fairy, you know, maybe he's the fairy godfather in, in many, many different ways. Maybe he's got some magical stuff. And these are people who probably on. were never um, that successful in that realm before. I'm guessing, I don't know. Maybe as yeah. they, they found power, they're sort of like, you know, they lean These into are it. Losers who found power. Yeah. And yeah. I bet we're going to hear about a lot more. You know, we already heard about how Caligula and the whole place was, right? With like mm. everybody sleeping with everybody. And it just was like, ah, God, these people who would touch them. Well, there's yeah. they're nobody, so, but they'll touch each other, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know? And uh, so it, to stir up that, that, uh, sort of craven to bring all of that Caligula energy into the White House was the part of the palace in intrigue reporting that actually did have value because it was about degrading that office and mm -hmm. yep. and, and that 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 I, as much as I can't stand all these books now coming out still coming out books from mm -hmm. terrible people. They could have done something, but didn't do something. But yeah. now they've got a book to sell. I'm not going to read it. Um, but like that Stephanie, whatever her name is. Grisham. It, yeah, yeah. But the side of it to pay attention to is how corrosive that energy is. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're co corroded, like I can't imagine if Chris, you know, you know, someone first of all needs to find out where the fuck this woman came from. Like, what's, what's, what's up with her? She came out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. She came out of nowhere in the state that's got the the gas shit and the pipeline with the oh yeah <laughs> something going on there. Yeah, Wait, yeah. did I not do that yeah. part? Did we not do? We did cinema, right? Didn't we? Did we not? No, oh my gosh! No, oh my gosh! The best know. part of the show. The best part of the yeah, show. Oh, do we have to do cinema. I, I was hoping. No, no, no. You got to just do this. Cause I just got to do the two things about okay, why she's it, why it, she's as it. corrupt as she is. I'm sorry, I forgot that she's. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, she's um, recently completed this um, internship at a Napa Valley winery, which she got paid uh, what one thousand one hundred seventeen dollars for the whole summer of being at the winery. She's not a typical winery person there in, in, in Napa Valley, but she's sort of got the job because of her friend, uh, Bill Pr uh, Price, who is a owner of TPG Capital, 
a private equity fund, one of the most lucrative funds in in uh, in America. In addition to being an intern, which is a nice thing to maybe do while you're uh, while you're a senator, she got a five thousand dollar per ticket fundraiser hosted by Mr. Price in Napa Valley, and amongst the people who were there, Bill Gates, who funded her um, some oh, money, God. and then she's now started a centrist pack so she can support all these other uh, centrist, I guess you'd call them. Uh, politicians using all this money that she's got from her from her friends in Napa Valley. Nothing you know illegal with all of this, but it's not the kind of person she pretended to be when she first ran for office. Um, and it's certainly not just an internship. It's a $5,000 ticket internship, uh, much more fundraising than anything else. So um, yeah, she's not clean at all, I don't think. You know, the, the private equity fund is, uh, is dirty, dirty, dirty. Um, not that they do anything you know, necessarily legal, but they, they, their operations are aggressive and, um, and they lean towards the very, very rich and not the very, very poor in, in any given state, um, which is, I guess, dirty. Uh, I ran out of steam here. Um, so that's the show for tonight. Thanks, you guys. I'll be, I, I hope you feel better. I yeah. hope you do. Oh, thank you. I'm going to feel better. I, 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 I really generally believe I'll be better by tomorrow morning, and it's not just wishful thinking. And uh, I encourage everyone, you know, give a little time and attention tomorrow to the Women's March. Yes, um, yes, yes, yes. And, and folks, uh, show it up there and, and willing to, to continue to speak out and do what we have to do in exercising um, our civil liberties to try to protect them. So, yeah, I mean, this is all uh, coming back. You know, uh, Donald Trump will be running for president in 24. And the GOP has a very aggressive campaign and a real possibility of winning the House uh next year so uh these guys I mean, are not I gone everything we've been speaking about tonight <laughs> is still ongoing this thing is still moving exactly. we're probably a third of the way into it we're not even halfway there so you know everything from kavanaugh to uh to the anti-vax stuff to facebook that's all still operating the way it was when we were there started all of this in 2016 and it's still continuing so I hope people aren't giving up uh, hope or or uh, faith in this because the battle continues. But you know we still have to continue battling because it's not done yet. Um, Greg, any last thoughts? Anything you want to share before we leave? You know, we haven't discussed um, the one nugget that came out in in Stephanie Grisham's book about <laughs> Trump requiring show tunes to oh, calm him down. Yes, to it. yes. and. Uh, and uh, you know, and that there was someone on staff nicknamed the Music Man, <laughs> who would play him soothing show tunes to calm him down. What's a soothing um, show tune? I... Midnight <laughs> on a sound from the pavement oh. has the moon lost. Him. I can keep singing while you fade out. Zephyr. Oh, I, I, yeah, I was enjoying it so much out. I would that's never fade that's out. All remember that is yeah. Putin's favorite song. Oh really? <laughs> Just so you remember? And he you know what? a documentary he made for himself with that song. Really? How yeah. do you know all this stuff? You just know it. Oh, fuck know it. It. I'd say that bastard forever. That's that a great fucking song, and I'm not letting them have it. I'm not yeah. letting them have it. I'm reappropriating the song. <laughs> fuck you, Vlad. You can't have it. On that oh. note, on that note, uh, I'm going to end the show. Thanks very much for being here tonight, LB and Greg Oliar. It's great to have you back together because we've been having that for a couple of weeks. Uh, and uh, we'll be back next Friday with the after show. Sorry, go ahead, LB. And out no. ends of spooky days. I have Anytime you want to cut, Zeb. Oh, no, I'm enjoying this. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be, I'm here all night. I, 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 you can just keep going. No problem. <laughs> all right, everybody. Have a good night. <laughs>